Yeah, I know the title of this video is a bit corny, but viewer's discretion is generally advised when it comes to the topics we're going to be talking about today. G'day, I'm Ash, and welcome yourselves to a different kind of video. Now, no, it's not talking about the new update, nor is it talking about new vehicles, or is it a topical discussion on anything really, but more so when we take a look at the stats and statistics of what it takes to unlock all the aircraft in War Thunder. Probably, like, why would he do that? Well, the simple answer is I have everything in the game in terms of aircraft uh, collection wise. Yes, yesterday I managed to unlock absolutely everything that there is to unlock in the game. And yeah, there is a lot of things to break down here. So we're going to go over some numbers and I'll show you what exactly just after I finish showing you that I've actually completed every air tree to the nth degree. Now I haven't spaded everything, but this has been a long term goal for me to get absolutely everything done. And, well, it has taken a long time, so we'll go over that as well. Now, there are 659 unlockable aircraft in total that you can get in War Thunder. Minus about maybe five or six, maybe seven, because some of those are no longer uh, accessible to the newer player. For example, they run these as events. Japan comes into mind with its reserve KI-210C, this thing, which is a rainbow version Kai-10. Not every player has access to this. There are a few vehicles like that. There is an Italian SM-79. There are a, I think there's a Russian SB-2M. One of the later variants of the MV3. There's another variant of that one. Uh, and I can't remember. Oh, yes. Britain gets a Gladiator 2F, which is above the, the 2S, which I don't have either. But I have most of the aircraft. So excluding that, there is 659 aircraft. For a total of 232 premium aircraft, that brings a total, a grand total of 891 vehicles to play or to fly around in in War Thunder. And I think that's utterly absurd. 659 aircraft, that's quite a good deal compared to the 232. Now, that doesn't include all the rank 7 stuff. We'll touch on that in a minute. But essentially, for, you know, the unlockable aircraft for USA, it's 102. For Germany, it's 96. Russia, it's 107. UK, it's 88. Japan, it's 83. China is 50. Italy is 52. France is 52. And Sweden is 29. Now, for premiums and event vehicles, obviously, that's a little more convoluted. But suffice to say that there is quite a lot of premiums in the game. 232 of them, to be exact. Six for Sweden. 12 for France, 11 for Italy, 6 for China, uh, 22 for Japan, 34 for UK, 47 for Russia, 47 for Germany, and 47 for USA. When you break that down, there is 138 rank 1s, 136 rank 2s, 116 rank 3s, 112 rank 4s, 92 rank 5s, and 65 rank 6s. That is quite a lot of variety in vehicle caliber. Having a look at the deep dive of the statistics, keep in mind this is not including tanks, my gameplay in helicopters or naval, but just aircraft alone. Uh, although I can't necessarily count for that, there isn't really a number that Gaja necessarily gives us. The thing is, I wish there were tools available to tell us how we have these stats. We know these stats exist, because uh, I was told by one of the content partner managers that I have actually played the game for 6,565 hours with a total of 3,030 logins. That's of May tw uh, 2021. So if I've played for 6,500 hours and I've played for the last eight years, 8,760 hours is a year, essentially. So I essentially have played 820 years hours a year so that's a thousand hours out of a year so the rest of the time spent playing is really uh, playing war thunder so that is 0.09 percent of the last eight years that's that's a shocking number in a way relevation to uh, how much time there is involved before you actually get in you know, consideration do you actually get anything for playing war thunder this long the answer is no when i go to achievement i go to achievements and i can have a look at the aircraft tab you get one for getting a helicopter you get some silver lines master of perfection so that's vehicle purchased i've got quite a lot of these you get a hundred thousand silver lines for each of those but then you've also got mastery so you have to master a certain subsection of aircraft as well and it gives you a bonus that's a pain in the rear um and then there is obviously a whole host of other things like a collector obtain several aircraft vehicles purchased 200 whereas i've got all 659 aircraft or 
how many there actually is available to players. Where is the, I guess, a special title or a sort of, I guess, thing that says, oh, I've got all, I've unlocked all the aircraft or I've unlocked all the tanks or I've unlocked all the ships. Why don't they give us a profile picture or something that allow us to customize our profile picture to stand out just a little bit. It's things like this that make me a bit confused in a way because a lot of people spend a lot of time playing this and I know that a small majority of you will never ever get to the higher end tiers but I've managed to do it and it is a lot of hard work but at the same time is there any other game like this right you know there's some of these there are steam achievements uh, and for which those are per nation however unlock 50 aircraft of Japan or unlock 25 aircraft of China um, but if they have the stats to tell people uh, about this kind of data why don't they show it to us you know I've been through three keyboards, three mice, three graphics cards, two laptops, two desktops, two therapists, the list goes on, and yet the game is still going strong. It's got decent graphics, generally still, it's somehow a functional game. And how many other games have lasted eight years and still have an active, growing population and an active community? As a free-to-game play in a really niche sort of area it caters to a large population sure it's not dcs but it does offer something else that i guess no other community really has and it's still going you know how many games do you play that you have played since 2013 because with all its complaints it's still a game and we keep coming back to play with friends so take a moment to forget about its failures because so the question is what now well, there isn't really an end to this. In order for the game to keep going, they need to continually add content. I wish that there was a roadmap that War Thunder would show us, at least what they plan and sort of want to show us for content-wise. I'd love for there to be a roadmap which we can discuss certain ideas and certain problems and, and poke a little bit of interesting insight into what the development is. I've learned a lot over the few years. But you can't necessarily say to Gaussian to say, hey, just fix the game. Just fix the game. That's all you have to do. Just fix the game. Because ultimately, that doesn't do anything. They need to continually add content for the game to evolve and the game to keep growing. It is a free-to-play game. That's how they make their money. And boy, have they made their money. I don't really want to know how many KA50s have sold. I don't really want to know how many premiums have sold. Hell, last year when they sold the German Hermann Sherman, that tank from early uh, closed beta, the pre-order tank, I sold 2,020 of those units for $60 each, which, you know, you do the math. It's quite a lot of money. So it's not like the community hasn't been supportive of Gaussian's efforts, and this is a free-to-play game. One of the most accessible games in the market. You've got Sim, Air Realistic, you've got Arcade. You know, there's, there's so many like benefits to this game that outweigh the negatives. And I guess people need to start realizing that. Yeah, I have a, a focus or tend to focus on more negative structures and I tend to look at the more negative things of the game. But in hindsight, everything is really not as bad as what it once seemed, okay? There are glaring issues with a grind and there are glaring issues with the economy and battle rating systems and compression. We've all heard that before. Just look at it as a game in if you're passionate about an aircraft would it be worth you sort of grinding up to an aircraft where you can play it and have a bit of fun with it. Probably. Everyone has their preferences and that's really all I have to say here. So yes, viewer discretion is advised for this particular video. I hope you've enjoyed it or at least uh, took taken an eye opener to some of the interesting things that War Thunder has to offer. Go have a bit of fun for once. You know, there are a lot of issues. Yes, don't get me wrong. We'll cover those in due time. But at the same time, you know, a functional game, it's been eight years. Still has a growing population. There's 85,000 players on right as we speak right now at 1.27 a.m. in the morning on the 1st of June, 2021. So you can look at the positives here. Um, if you have any video suggestions or video ideas would you like me to cover, no, I won't be spading all the aircraft. That'll be absolutely torture. But I will go through at least some of my favorites in different tech trees, and that'll probably be a video soon. But rank 7 is just around the corner, and the update will be probably soon. So we'll see you then, hey? All right, my name is Ash, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.
I guess that means I'll have to suffer myself with another eight years. Hey, um... Hey, Mike. Can you give me the stuff, please? Oh my god, it looks so bare. What? 